Let's just follow the best of the world. And we find we can do today. We can do a lot of the privilege of coming into your sanctuary to wish you good. Bless us, Lord, as we go through this service. And your Holy Spirit, Lord, is about to take charge of everything we do. For those of us who came with heavy hearts, Lord, the Lord, we ask that you relieve those heavy burdens. And for those of us who brought joy, let our joy spread.
affairs and the encouragement of Christ, any consolation from love, any sharing of the Spirit, any compassion and sympathy, make my joy complete. Be of the same mind, having the same love, being in full of hope and of one mind. Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility regard others as better than yourselves. Let each of you look not to your own interests, but to the interests of others. Let the same kind, let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who through whom he was in the form of God, did not regard the quality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human life. And being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus, every name should bend in heaven and on earth and on the people, and every tongue should confess. That Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Therefore, my beloved, just as you have always obeyed me, not only in my presence, but much more now in my absence, you call to your own salvation, fear and tremble. For it is God who is at me in you, enabling you to live well and to live for his good pleasure. Do it all the Lord. Yeah. I will sing my service number 304. 304 to see me to be right, but my sister let me serve you. 304.
We are ten lines. Yeah? We are ten lines. We like for different reasons. We like to be popular. We like to preserve our image. We like to guard our secrets and our privacy. We like to avoid punishment. Is it true? Yes. What do we lie about? We lie about everything. Our age, our income, our family status, our relationships. We lie about everything. And if we are not careful, we find that every day we lie. Amen? Amen. I'm lying to you right now. I have breathed in my hair. My hair not so long. We lie, don't we? Yes, we lie. We lie all the time. Wayne Gruden, in his book Christian Ethics and Introduction to Biblical Moral Reasoning, calls us to guard against such actions. He wants us to develop biblical actions, attitudes, and personal characteristics that we will get God's approval. He wants us to follow Christian ethics, to live the way God wants us to live. When we read the Gospel reading today in Matthew 21, the second part of it, the parable of the two sons, when we read the first few verses, we may think that the parable is about lies, about deceit, about disobedience. Because we read, a man had two sons. He went to the first and said, Son, go and work in the vineyard today. And he answered, I will not. But later he changed his mind and went. And the father went to the second and said the same, and he said, I will go. And he didn't go. Was it lying? Was it disobedience? Was it deceit? But as we read further, we understand that Jesus is not talking about lies and deceit in that way. He is trying to get us to understand how the marginalized people respond to salvation. And he asked the Jews, which of the two did the fathers with? And they said the priest. And then Jesus explained to them that there are certain prostitutes and tax collectors who will enter the kingdom ahead of all these religious leaders, simply because in the beginning they didn't do what God wanted them to do. They said no. Afterwards they changed their mind, like the first son. But the Jews were like the second son. They said, yes, we will obey your will and we will do everything you want us to do. But they did not. And Jesus brought this to the fore because he wanted us to understand that sometimes when we pretend to be pious and religious and everything, that there are people who we despise for one reason or the other, the people on the margins, the people who are ostracized by society, who will eventually refuse to follow, but in the end, they will change their minds. And then they get into the kingdom ahead of us. Jesus is always lying or relating or talking to these people whom society despises. Throughout scripture, he interacted with the tax collectors. Sometimes he was favorable to them, and sometimes he spoke ill of them, linking them with the Gentiles and with the prostitutes. But he came to the tax collectors because he came to the people who were lost. He came to the people who were sick so that he could heal them. We know that the gospel that we are reading today from Matthew, Matthew was one of his disciples and Matthew was a tax collector. When the Jews saw that Jesus was associated with sinners, they regarded Jesus also as a sinner. You see the company that we keep? People associate us with the company we keep. If you keep good friends, they think you are good. If you keep bad friends, they think you are bad, even though you are not. But once you are in close association with people, people will naturally put you into a certain bracket. And so the Jews were not happy with Jesus and what he was doing. But it wasn't only the tax collectors, it was the prostitutes. And even in our minds, when we start to think about the prostitutes, we think there are people that 
必须去连苏西他们三十岁。But Jesus associated himself with them. The woman who was caught in adultery. And you remember that story? That story in John? When they brought the woman caught in adultery, and Jesus bent into the sand and he wrote something, and then he looked up at them and said, Let the one among you who is without sin cast the first stone. She was a prostitute. Jesus forgave her. He said, Sin no more. The sinful woman in Luke 7 took the whole bottle of alabaster perfume and bathed Jesus from the crown of his head straight down. The woman who sat at his feet and wept and dried her tears with his hair, her tears with her hair, wiped his feet with her hair. She was a prostitute. Wow. And if we read the Old Testament, one of Jesus' ancestors, Rahab, was also a prostitute. Why then? Why then is Jesus associated with the rejects? What it is, is he bringing us to? To understand that all children belong to God. All children are God's children. However we label them, whatever pathway they fall into in life, all children are God's children. And Jesus said, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has called me to bring the gospel to the poor and to the destitute and to those who are wrong. Those who are rejected by society. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me to do it. Therefore, when we read in the first part of the gospel reading, and they ask Jesus, by what authority are you doing these things? Will they not listen to him? Would they not listen to him when he said, my father and I are one? Would they not listen to him when he said, everything that my father has, he has given to me? All authority has been given to me. Would they not listen to him when he was saying these things to them? How could they not come and ask him, by what authority? By what authority? And Jesus said to them, before I answer you the question, I will ask you a question. He said, where did John's baptism come from? Was it from heaven or was it of human origin? And I want you to listen carefully. Was it from heaven or was it of human origin? And they had to find a way out and they had to lie. Because if they had said it was from heaven, he said, why did you follow him? And if they said it was human origin, the crowd would take them apart. And so they found a way to escape. How many times do we lie to find a way to escape? And I said, yeah, all of us, eh? Oh, all of us. We find ways to get out of situations. And so we give a lie. And in the whole aspect of Christian ethics, it's that Buddhism is driving us to ask ourselves, are we truly truthful in our dealings with ourselves and with people? Are we truthful in our dealings with ourselves and with our other people? Jesus gave us two commandments. How many of us are within myself? When I say us, it's all of us. Can say that we keep those two commandments dutifully and religiously. How many of us can say that? That on a daily basis, we have to love the Lord of our God with all our heart and with all our soul and with all our mind and love our neighbors as ourselves. But first of all, if you don't love yourself, I don't see how many people think of loving the neighbor and loving God. We criticize ourselves. We are hard on ourselves. We do fact, we do show. We know that straight enough. You know, my mother should have married a different man and I have no clue here. I'm going to have to struggle in who is by the interest Do you understand? Why should they look for a tall handsome man? Because I have to go and do some light reception and I don't have the money for plastic surgery. And we look at all the people who are down the runway and we feel we should 
be like that. And every day we grumble about something about ourselves. We are not happy. So if we are not happy with who we are, we don't be comfortable in our sin, then how is it that we could say we love our neighbor? And far less, how can we say we love the God who created us in His image, in His image and likeness? Whoa! If you are created in God's image and likeness and you believe that, why are you grumbling about who you are? Should we not be dancing and prancing and showing off? Let us examine 
re-examine our lives and let us cherish ourselves for who we are. Let us re-examine our gifts and find out whether we are using these gifts. Let us re-examine our association. Are we debarring people from coming into our church? Are we against those who are not well off? Do we label people? And so, because we label them, they don't feel welcome into our presence. We want to increase our numbers. And today I charge you, go out into the highways and the byways. Go out to the people who are labeled the rejects of society. Go out to the people who Christians don't want to talk to. Be Christ-like. Lie with them. Talk with them. Encourage them and bring them to Christ. Amen? Amen. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Before we go to the Apostles' Creed, I would like to bless our drums. Um, we have a new set established, and I know that we would want to hear the drums being played. I will clap set. So, Mr. Williams, do you want to say something before I press the ground? No? So I would like you to stand.
nice to turn it up they go. We pray for Bishop Lord, retired Bishop Snipe and Calvin, our priests, deacons, lay ministers, lay evangelists, and all parishioners of this diocese, asking God's richest blessing and measure in the name of the ministers of His will and sacrament. In the province of the West Indies, we pray for all the Archbishop, the Most Reverend Dr. Paul Gregory, for all bishops, priests, and deacons in the province, that they will remain faithful in the nature of In communion, we pray for the Archbishop of Canterbury, the Most Reverend and Honorable Justin Landy. We pray, Lord God, for all the deacons and priests and people everywhere. Lord, in your mercy. In our nation, we pray for our President and Excellency Christine Father Andrew, for our Prime Minister, Dr. Keith Christopher Rowley, for ministers of Parliament, the Tobago House and those of the judiciary, Lord, in your mercy, in our diocese and cycle of prayer. We pray for the Holy Trinity Cathedral for the state, where the very Reverend Dr. Shelley and Tenyan, Dean and Rector, where Reverend David Fidden and Colin, Reverend Cheryl Mockley, Reverend Cheryl, we pray for Trinity College Newton and for Trinity Junior School. Lord, in your place. In our parish, we pray for our clergy and lady, for the youth, for the sick and the shopping, for those who celebrate the play days and anniversaries, and all others who require our prayers. Lord, in your place. We turn to page 198. And as we call on the assistant chairman and views in our prayers, we pray for the loss of the sister in time of anger. And we know that the service will be held this Wednesday, the 4th of October, at 11 a.m. here at St. Andrew. So as we raise challenge in our prayers and as we ask God to surround the journey with his comfort, let's pray the prayer from the gate. Almighty God, remember before you today your faithful servant time, and we pray that having opened to her the gates of life, life, you will receive from more and more into your joyful service, that all who have faithfully served you in the past, she may share the eternal victory of Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns to be with the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. We continue with the Thank you. 
for summer, the CPWI is David Wonderful, is for summer. Yeah, for the summer.
Jesus has been the same. 658.
I'm here to just say who would have, who would have, who would have persons that contributed towards the purchasing of the of a brand new drum set. All of them are members of the, what we call the original San Andreas Youth Group. So I'm just going to tell you
No substitute for the shepherd. It's taken from Psalm 23, verses 1 to 6. The healing service is started for Saturday, October 21st, and the preacher is in the evening, sorry, 4 30. And the preacher will be Reverend Deacon Ike. Uh, for the harvest, all members are wishing and those wishing to contribute towards stores are asking, kindly ask to contact Mrs. Royals here. After the service, you will see her out there uh, selling you beef and bread. And the harvest lunch tickets are priced at $60. It's fish, pork, and chicken. Tickets are available from members of the management committee. And there are other harvest news throughout the diocese. Today is St. Michael's and Orangers harvest in Diego Martin. It is October 1st, 19 p.m. So I guess that is about to start in a few minutes. Um, at October 8th, that's next Saturday, will be St. Nicholas Anglican Church in Tiberland, Grace Parish, New Grant, where Ike is the assistant curate. And there, our is on the 8th of October, so the team reimagining Christian, celebrating God's goodness from Psalm 103 to 8, 930 a.m. sing along. Their celebrant will be the Reverend Canon Wilson Thomas. And their preacher will be Reverend. All parish are invited to come and join the synagogue with them. Also on October 8th, the St. Barnabas and the Hill Church in Pleasantville is having their Father Harvest Festival. The theme so up and reaper rejoicing together. 9 a.m. sing along, 10 to 10 a.m. Uh, service. The celebrant and preacher is Reverend Shakir Charles from the parish of St. Mary's Temple in Pekin. All I invite. And oh, there's another activity on Sunday, the 8th of October. We are all going to split ourselves. But the Southern Squires invites you and presents All for Joy. It's in celebration of our main musical director, Joy Maria and Caesar, at the St. Benedict Arch Church, Larmin. 5 p.m. The cost is a hundred and fifty dollars. Please be seated by 4:45 p.m. And tickets are available, and there are two numbers here. Um, again, if you want to go, you can just see me at the back, and I'll give you the numbers. But I'm going to call them up: six five seven one five six eight, or you can WhatsApp seven one six three five three. That's for the southern S point. And there is another one, I hope this is home. This is Saturday, October 21st. This is the day of our healing service. It's the Jazz for the Holy Trinity Cathedral Restoration Fund, featuring Miss Joy Big Fund, Dr. Ray Hallman, Mr. Lester Paul, and Dr. Valentino. Saturday, 21st October 2023, at the Southern Academy for the Performing Arts at 7 p.m. So here we will have that. VIP seating $300 and general seating $200. You can contact, again, contact me back if you want to get tickets. Um, I'll give you the phone number for the extension. It's 219 7272 extension. And that will go back one more. Um, again, August 8th, Christ Church in Cedras. Their harvest is October 8th, 2023. And there is another one at St. Mark's Church in Point Fortin on Sunday, 12th November. So this begins at 10 a.m. lunch to the 12 noon to variety of stores, etc. Uh, so it's from Father Dean Husbands, the assistant curate of St. Mark's Parish in Point So there's lots of activity this month into November. Houses all over the diocese. 
So please try to make one of your country member all just give me a hour on the back and I will, you know, finish with which one you want to attend. Yep, that's it. So thank you very much, parishioners, and have a blessed day and a successful new month in October. Honorary session on it is number 541 in the city of Hawaii. 541, who is on the road side? 541. Thank you for being here and may God continue to bless you.